Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I was going to shoot this outside as usual, but we just got a new puppy and because two dogs was, was apparently not enough. Uh, and trying to get all three of them out the door and my camera and my microphone was just too much. And so we're going to shoot this one inside today. It is like howling outside anyway, so I'm not sure you would have been able to hear me out there uh, anyway. So on today's video, uh, which is why we're here, <laughs> we're going to uh, talk about SQL Lite, and we'll use the SQF Lite package, which I'm not sure I'm saying that correctly, but that's the recommended package for working with SQL Lite uh, and Flutter. And uh, it's very well documented, and you can certainly use the database for internal storage, uh, writing records, and all that through your app. Uh, but I want to use it in in the the role today of having embedded data in your application. Um, and there's a lot of applications where this just makes a lot of sense. Uh, if you think about something like a workout app, uh, if that person, if your user downloads the app, they go to the gym and they don't have a connection and you're reliant on an API or Firebase for your data, then they're gonna have a very bad experience. And so you would actually wanna have all those workouts, those exercises preloaded in a database which is embedded in the app so that when they open it up, if they don't have a connection, they can start working out and, and be happy. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna use an external tool to create a SQLite database. We're gonna bring that into our application and embed it uh, and build a very simple screen that looks like this. So we're just going to build uh, a couple of records for a trail system that has the trail name, the distance, and the difficulty. So again, a situation where uh, you get out in the wilderness to hike and that, that data might not be available. So you would embed it in a database, have it available in the app when it loads up. So that's what we're going to do today. Let's go ahead and get started. So I have created a basic Flutter application. I've got an iPhone emulator here ready to go. Uh, before I touch anything there, I want to go ahead and build my database. And there's a number of different options out there. I'm going to use one called, uh, let's see, DB Browser SQL Lite. And it's available at sqlitebrowser.org. Uh, it's free. It's available for Windows, Mac OS, etc. cetera. Uh, I had a little trouble getting it set up with my Mac. It gave me all kinds of issues with permissions. Uh, and then I went ahead and fired it up today, and it worked just fine. But there are alternatives out there uh, if this one doesn't work for you. Really just looking for a basic editor to be able to create a database and export it. If you don't want to do any of that, there is a website called SQLite Online, sqliteonline.com, uh, and it has a basic database here. The only difference is you're not going to actually be able to create the database. You can just work with what they've got. Um, so if you want to do that instead and you want to just download the uh, database here with SaveDB, you can do that, but you're going to get just the preform columns instead of the ones that we're going to set up here. So just make sure you're working off of these columns uh, instead of the ones we create. All right, so using the tool I got here, um, I'm going to just go ahead and create the table uh, and put the trails inside of that table. So uh, with this particular one, I've got new database up here. So I'm going to click that and I'm just going to put trails. Uh, as my database and pay attention to where you put it because you'll need to find it later and I'll just save that um, and then I'm going to put a trails table inside my trails database like that and then this you know in this particular one I'm allowed to add fields uh, through the same screen as this one I've worked with some others where you add the table and then it takes you to a different screen um, so we'll do text. This uh, column here is, is non-nullable, so I'm going to check that. So it can't be null. Uh, I'm going to do distance, and we'll do that as a number. Uh, let's do numeric. Make that non-null too, and then we'll do difficulty. And so that will be a text. Let's see, from there I can go to, let's try browse table. And, no, I didn't want that one. Execute SQL, that's what I want here. All right, let's see me do some bad SQL here. Into trails. 
Let's see, we'll have name, distance, difficulty, and we'll do values. I actually have one I paid for that I don't have to actually type raw SQL. I can just use a, an editor, but I'm using the free one here for you folks, so I hope you appreciate it. Uh, let's see, let's do pond loop. And we'll call that 2.5 for the distance, and that's going to be easy. We'll copy that a couple more times. Let's do like three trails. So the second one will be Canyon Rim, and that is 5 miles, 5.1 miles, and it is hard. And then we'll have, let's do Highlight Falls, sounds nice. And that is four and a half miles, and we're going to call that Moderate. All right, we'll execute that, and it says successful, so let me change this over to a select. All right, there we go. We got our robust database to bring into our system or our application. So there we go. We got our robust database to bring into our application. Um, this one actually has a right changes. Let me just click that, make sure that that uh, saves here. And then I should be good to go ahead and shrink that. Uh, and then we can turn to our application. So I'm going to grab a couple of packages. So SQF Lite is definitely going to be one of them. Again, no guarantee I'm saying that correctly. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to put that in pubspec.yaml. Like so. And the other one I'm going to want is the path package. Because what's going to happen is we're going to put this... Uh, in our assets folder, but uh, we're not going to be able to actually work with it out of our assets folder. We're going to need to write some code that takes the database from our assets folder and copies it to a local directory that uh, we can then actually use the database from. And that's obviously going to be a little different for iOS and Android, but we're going to let Path take care of that in the background for us. So we'll add that as well. Uh, before we get anything started, we should also get our assets going. So let's uh, uncomment that. And I'm going to create an assets folder in the root. Like that. And then I am going to... Um, let's just bring in the whole assets folder so everything is in there. Okay, now we can uh, find our database and actually put it in our assets. And so I've got mine in the temp directory here. So I'm just going to drag this over to assets. And now I have a database in my assets, which will be available to the app. So let's go into our lib folder. Let's go to our main and uh, let's just clean this up a little bit. Um, I'm just going to take out the whole class, my home page. So We'll leave all this up here, but this class, my home page, let's just get this out of there. And I'm going to recreate it as a stateful widget. I mean, pretty much the way it was, but I didn't want all that junk in there. So we'll do my home page like that. And I'm not going to feed the title in. So let's just get rid of that up here like that. All right. So instead of a container like you get when you type the STFL, we'll do a scaffold. We'll do an app bar, which is just a blank app bar. We're not concerned about appearances here. And then for a body, um, let's do a list view. And we can leave it blank for now. All right, so we're going to want to make sure that we uh, model our objects so we have something to uh, turn our SQL results into a Dart object with. Uh, and then we're going to write, write ourselves a service to interact with the database. And so let's start with 
uh, model. So I'm going to put a new folder inside lib. I'm actually going to put an SRC just because it's it's uh, it's good convention. And then inside SRC, I'll put models, and I will also put services. All right. So for a model, I'm going to put a new file in there, and we'll just call it uh, trail dot dart. And that's just a class with trail, and we just have uh, three properties that we want to map there. So we'll do a final string, which is our our name, a final double, which is our distance, and a final string, which is difficulty. And then for a constructor, we'll do this dot name, this dot difficulty this dot distance so we'll do a name constructor there uh, and then lastly we'll want to do a factory constructor so that when we get our map from uh, SQLite we can turn turn around and make that map into a dart object uh, really easily so use the factory keyword we'll do trail uh, and we'll do from JSON is what we'll call this uh, custom constructor and we're gonna get a map with string key values and uh, dynamic actual values and we'll call that JSON open up some curly braces and here we will return a new trail object with a name which will be from JSON name so these are the properties in our databases which uh, our database which happens to match uh, the names of the properties so difficulty JSON difficulty and distance all right that takes care of our model so let's flip over to the services folder let's add ourselves a new file which will be our db underscore service dot dart and we can call this uh, database service so I'll do class database service And we're going to want an instance of a database, so we can get that from package there. We can pull that in. That comes from SQF Lite. And so we're going to need to initialize that database whenever, um, well, before we really make any call. So we'll either need to, if our, our app calls for it, uh, initialize it at the start, or in this case, uh, what we want to do is have those trails available when we load the app. So we're actually going to uh, call to get the trails and we'll call our initialize function and then we'll get the trails right afterwards. So that will be all kind of in one fell swoop. So we'll give ourselves an init database function and this is going to be asynchronous. And what we're going to do here is uh, initialize the database, obviously, from the, from the name. But what we need to do is if this is the first time this is run and the database is only in the assets folder, we want to take that resource from the assets folder and we want to copy it to a uh, directory on the local device for use. And if that's already been done, then we want to skip that step and just initiate the database. Um, so we're going to do db is going to be await open database and that's something you'll need to import and that's going to come from assets and we have called it trails db and that should be equals right there there we want to want to get our database path so we can just create a variable called database path and we can use a helper function from sqf lite which is get database path like that and then we want to create a path which we can do with join which is going to come uh, which is going to be from the path package and we want to take our database path and append the name of our database, which is trails.db, like that. All right, so now we want to check if that database already exists. So this is where we split off our logic into creating versus just initializing the existing database. So we'll create a variable called exists. 
and we will set that equal to the awaited result of database exists. So another helper function, and we pass it the path. All right, so if it does not exist, and so this is where most of our function uh, is gonna be written. So this is where we need to do the copying of the resources, and we'll just print to the console, creating a new copy from assets. So let's check if the parent directory exists. And we can do that by trying and awaiting directory dir name path dot create and recursive true like that and we need to bring in directory all right and then we can catch and we don't actually care what we catch so we can use an underscore there and have nothing for the catch all right then we're ready to copy from the asset and we're going to do this with bytes so this is going to look gnarly but we'll do a byte data which we'll call data, and that's gonna be the weighted value of root bundle dot load, whoops. And we want to join assets and oops, trails dot db. So if you, had a, if you wanted to put this in a subdirectory like databases, so if you had assets here and you put databases, you'd want to do this. So these are uh, joining these two to create a path. Um, in this case, I put it directly inside the assets folder. So it's assets and then trails and need to bring that in. All right, I'm going to get a list of integers which we'll call bytes. This is bringing me back to my Java days. As you int eight list like that, data dot offset in bytes and data dot length in bytes. Let me, let me expand this out so we can see it all. I mean, don't get too hung up on what's going on here. This is just the, the process of copying the resource to a local directory. All right. So now we can write and flush the bytes by awaiting file path dot write as bytes, and we're almost there. And flush true. All right, so that is the process of moving it. So this whole if block is now done. And that's only going to execute once when that resource is first created. And this is what's going to happen every time, which is await open database. And then we can just do path. And we want to actually set read only to true. That way it's immutable. All right, that's going to get it open. And we do also want to make sure that we have a way of closing this. So I'm going to create a disposal method. Uh, and inside there, we're just going to write db.close. You want to definitely close this when you exit the application or you no longer need it. And then the last thing we need to do is just get our trails. And so we're going to get back a future list of type trail. And we can call that get trails. That will be asynchronous. Let's bring in trail. Uh. And so since what I want to be able to do is just call get trails uh, when we fire up this app, I'm going to go ahead and do a wait init database. So that calls this whole operation up here. 
I know I'm going to get back a list of map. And we'll just call that list. All right. And that's the result of DB raw query. And if you want to go ahead and type the SQL in here, go ahead and do it. Uh, if you have a complicated query that you want to copy or you're just not confident that you'll type it correctly, you can go ahead and paste it right in there. Like that. And then when you get that list of maps back, what we can do is return list.map. And so we get an object back and I'm just going to call it out a trail because I know it is a trail. And we'll take our trail model, we'll call our from JSON constructor and we'll pass it that trail. And that will actually return an iterable. So just come here to the end and do to list and then you will have a list of type trails. And that's actually all we need to do in our service. All right, so then at this point we can go to main and I'm actually gonna start the emulator. All right, so I'm gonna come down here to the my home page and I wanna bring in an instance of my service. So I'll do that up here with final DB service equals database service. Like so. And we did create a dispose method because we wanna be able to shut this connection down when we're done. That's why I went with a stateful widget here so I could tap into the dispose method and call dbservice.dispose like that. So we're going to properly shut down our database at this point. Uh, I'm going to take this list view and I am going to wrap it uh, in a future builder. So I'm going to get lazy here and just wrap with a stream builder using the uh, using Visual Studio Code and just change to future builder and then change stream to future. And what we're going to get back is our list of trails. So we'll do, instead of object, we can do list trail like that. And our future is going to be db service get trails like that. And inside our snapshot, while we're waiting data, we can say if not snapshot dot has data, then we will return a center widget with a child of a circular progress indicator like that. So while it loads, and I'm going to do a list view builder. And so the item count is going to be snapshot dot data dot length. And then the item builder will do context index and open up some curly braces. And I'm just going to return a list tile. So again, this isn't going to look super great. And that's okay. Um, so for the title, uh, why don't I do the trail for the title? So we'll do a text widget with snapshot dot data uh, index dot name. And you know what? I'm just going to copy that two more times rather than type snapshot dot data dot index again. And for the leading, we'll do difficulty for leading. And then for the trailing, we can do the distance. And it's not going to have a label or anything. We won't worry about that. Um, and I'll need to cast that to a string. All right, let me go ahead and restart the state. And there we go. So we've got should match our database here. We've got the Easy Pond Loop 2.5, the Hard Canyon Rim 5.1, the Moderate Highlight Falls 4.5. Things don't line up there. It doesn't look pretty. 
This isn't a, a, uh, a video on layout. It's a video on SQLite. So you're going to have to forgive me on that one. And so that is how you can write your database first, put in all the data that you need to have available when your, your user runs the app for the first time, uh, import it in your assets directory, and then when they download that app, it's all there, it's all just ready to go, whether they have an internet connection or not. So hope you found that useful. Uh, this is a skill that I think every uh, mobile developer needs to have in their, in their toolbox, and this is how you do it in Flutter. So thanks for watching, and hopefully we will see you in a future video. Video.